it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from the heart of Oklahoma as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Praise the Lord, Oklahoma City. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on this extremely memorable day here in Oklahoma City. As you are most aware, I'm sure by this time, this is the day of remembrance, the anniversary of the bombing of the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building in Oklahoma City. Dignitaries from around the country have gathered to this place today to join in with us in honoring the victims, the 168 people who died in this bombing, the hundreds of survivors, relatives and friends, those who were uh, impacted negatively in some way, as we all were. We welcome, of course, the Vice President of the United States, uh, Vice President Al Gore, and our entire Oklahoma delegation, congressional delegation, both congressmen and senators. We welcome them to Oklahoma City today as they say words that will, I'm sure, comfort our hearts. Program we are very happy to welcome uh, S.L. Spud Beckus, who is from this uh, central Oklahoma area, lives in Moore, is known as the Oklahoma Poet. And just 17 hours after that tragedy, uh, God gave him a, a, a word, a poem. And as I mentioned earlier, at this very day, being read into the congressional records in Washington, D.C., is this poem. And I think that you'll be blessed by it, and it, it will set for us the tone for the remainder of this program. Would you just be blessed as... Spud Beckers shares with us, from his heart, the heart of America. April 19th of 95, a day Oklahoma and the world will remember for the rest of their lives. It's 9 a.m. and most is calm. Then comes 9.02 and straight from hell comes devastation in the form of a bomb. Quickly we turn to the TV and see panic and fear. We see death and destruction and for some death grows near. Death and destruction by terrorists. How can this be? It's just not heard of in OKC. We listen close as the body count grows. Then we realize, oh my God, that can't be. That's someone I know. Then comes the helplessness from within because we realize there's nothing to justify this act that cost us relatives and friends. We ask ourselves, why Oklahoma? But if we stop and think, the answer is simple. The actions of the hunter is to kill not cripple. The hunter goes for the heart and the rest of the body falls. But the cowards that hit the heart of the United States did not know how strong faith in Oklahomans can be. And this they did not anticipate. Oklahoma, 
is not only the heart of America, it is the backbone. And our pride and faith will show the world, even in tragedy, we will hold our head up, trusting God, and walk tall. America opens her arms to the world and offers freedom and peace. She feeds the hungry and tries to cure the sick and diseased. And all she asks is each man, woman, and child do their best to live life free the American way and ask God for forgiveness. But life in this country for some is nothing less than evil. They dream of destruction. And what Americans today, they can kill. We think of the lost men, women, and children and ask the Lord why. We try to be strong at first, but it's too much. We are but man, so for most, we bow our head and cry. But when the tears stop and our eyes clear, nothing on this earth can stop an American. And even in tragedy, we will show the world there is nothing to fear. We are a proud country, the best on the planet. And from our childhood to our death, our pride and faith become part of us. And this we never regret. So for the good of the world, I say this, be with God. Fear not the evil from hell, for hell has not the courage, the pride, the body, or the heart of an American. And this day, today, the world and Oklahoma will never forget. God bless America. Thank you, Spud Beckus. Thank you for sharing that. Thank God for giving that to you. The heart of America. I said earlier that the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart, and I, I think that is true. But I can say that the pride of America is the heart of America, and it's the heart of this beautiful part of this world. It's, we're more than the heartland. We're the land of the heart. It's a great day. We're... We're, we're thanking God that joy comes in the morning. This is the morning of our joy. We thank God for this. We're not going to do this every year because this is something that we'll always remember. It'll always have its impact and we'll grow from it. But this is a special time this year, this day of remembrance. And we're very happy to have as a part of this day of remembrance Spud Beckus, who is the Oklahoma poet. We heard his poem earlier um, about uh, the blessings of, of God on America. Spud, thank you for being here today, first thank of all. You, Just God. let me welcome you. God bless you. Thank you for the gift that God has given you. Let me ask, first of all, what is this, the Oklahoma poet? Well, on July 3rd uh, of 95, the same day I gave myself to Christ, he revealed to me what my calling is in life. Uh, for 26 years, I had written these small little writings to give to people, this voice would come to me in my sleep after I was witnessed to back in 1969 by a man named Danny Witherspoon. I worked at Sears. And I had no idea, I, you know, what he was doing. I told him I didn't have time for the Lord or anything. I was busy making a living at the time, and I wasn't interested in what he had to say. But about a month later, my whole life started changing. I would hear this voice that would come to me and give me these little writings. And they always were real, real meaningful, meant things to people. And I'd just give them away, give them to people. And uh, by not re leading a Christian life, well, I got corrupt and I divorced from a, a loving family. But I'm, I've raised, I was over, worth over a million dollars. I raised quite a family. And I got corrupt and was an adulterer and got mixed up with a younger lady and stayed with her 11 years. And... Eventually, we just was in the world buying everything. I had so much money, and I went down to a bicycle and six cents at one time or later. <laughs> wow. was, God was waking me up then. I think so. But uh, really what happened was last year when this bomb went off, my life started changing. And uh, I ran downtown because Kent Jones on KWMA radio was on the radio, and my speaker fell off on my bed whenever that bomb went off. I was at 32nd and South Robinson. I was in the den of sin because uh, I'd lost all my money and I had turned to drugs. And I was a small-time cocaine dealer on South Robinson. Wow. That's what I was doing. Uh, now, this was a year ago. But I still had a heart, and I wanted to go down and try and help these people. 
I couldn't get in, so I came back, and like Amy said, she watched it on TV, and everyone was quite numb. I was really numb. Later on that night, I went to bed, and about 2.30 in the morning, the voice I'd heard for 26 years came to me and spoke like never before. It's not an audible voice. It's a voice that you hear in your heart. Sure. And I sat down, and I started writing as I write, and I knew this was great. This was good. And the next day... When I'd finished, though, I heard this voice speaking to me. said, I'd given you the heart of America. Use it. I didn't know what to do with this. Here I was, a man just just hours before was drinking bourbon. And, and uh, I was, you know, I thought I was just losing my mind. But here I could see on several pieces of paper towels I wrote this on. When I finished, I made 100 copies the next day, and I went out and I gave them to horseback riders. I put it on tape, gave one to the governor's office. I knew it was good. But, but not living a Christian life, one month later, I had to make up my mind to either go to prison or go to trial for possession of $20 worth of cocaine. And I chose to go on to prison and get away from the people I was around, try and change a little bit, just get away from here. I've been here all my life in Oklahoma City. I, like I said, I was real respectable, but was made over a million dollars, worth over a million dollars. And I went literally down whenever this young lady and I ran out of money and and we separated. It just destroyed me. Sure. And I went down to a bicycle. I walked four miles and borrowed the bicycle and six cents in my pocket. And I decided I'd just start completely over. But I was still into this trap I was in. The devil sure. got me in this trap. And so anyway, I went on to prison. I wasn't supposed to be gone but around 30 days. It was my first time in. I would just be down there and then come back on a leg monitor. And a good friend of mine, who was a partner of mine, had a business there, called Mr. J. And he had betrayed me, and he had had my phone shut off, and I didn't know this, so I didn't qualify for the monitor. And they sent me to East Cell House in McAllister and locked me in a four-bay steel box. Big Mac, huh? We're Big talking, Mac. We're the talking original. hard time now. 1908, 23-hour lockdown because they didn't know what to do with me. But God had a plan. That's what happened. You know, I had a plan, but God had his plan, and that's what happened. He had to entrap me and get me in prison. But a long story short, he came to me there and on 6 and 3, exactly one month before I gave myself to Christ, and he gave me this writing called The President Came to My Town Today. And I would like to quickly do a little part of that. What I'm getting to is these things are so special because God gave me this message before I was a Christian. And then one month later, when God came to me and woke me up and I confessed my sins to Christ by myself in this four by eight box, no one else there, that's what became the Oklahoma poet. That day the Oklahoma poet was born. Well, he was born. The, the writings of the Oklahoma poet are inspired by God, written and delivered directly to the heart of man, which is the home of Jesus. And that's the definition of the Oklahoma poet. Mm -hmm. I am going to come out with a book with these writings called the home of Jesus. You know. I, you, I want you to share that little bit with us, and we're going to have a song, and then we're going to close out with the remainder of your testimony. But I remember a testimony by Christ, Christmas Evans, a preacher of another era, who said, you can take a man, bind him in chains, put him in a barrel, and nail the lid on. Mm -hmm. Of course, those old wooden barrels. Preach the gospel to him, he said, through a knot hole. And a man bound in chains, nailed in a wooden barrel, can do everything in that barrel he needs to do mm -hmm. to be saved. Be because saved. the scripture said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, right. and thou shalt be saved. Here, you, you were about in that condition. You were chained was. in sin. Locked up in a jail cell in McAllister in old Big Mac. And yet Jesus Christ saved you there when you called right. out to him. All by myself. And that's why it's so special. No one was there preaching to me, which I don't hold that against you. No, thank you. I appreciate that. I, it's special <laughs> to me because I know it's real and I know God came to me. He came this to time. you personally. And he, ultimately, by the way, he comes to everyone personally, whether it's after a message or not. The Oklahoma poet, he has a tape. I'm trying to get it so it doesn't glare here. and let, I'll get a picture of that. Uh, entitled The Heart of America, the poem that he just shared. He is a full-time poet for Jesus. That's a unique ministry. I, and I'm sure that uh, he's not on some high uh, income uh, salary, but God's blessing him and taking care of him, and he's doing what he's doing for the Lord's. But that's probably a joke, isn't it? I live on $50 a week. Yeah, well, praise God. Wow. I, I'm totally dedicated to this, and I have uh, partners that... One man bought me a car, gave me an office and a place to live for, for a year. And now then the man that betrayed me, 
I drove by his business and God told me to turn around and go back and talk to him. Now, he, he opened up to me and he apologized and he is a man, he pays me $100 a week and $50 goes to the courts because I have to court costs to pay and $50 I live on. So I have a place to live, I have an office to work out, I have a new car. Another man donated to owns Revels Big and Tall, donated a suit. My clothes were stolen while I were gone. So, so I'm kind of a broke man, but you know what? I'm the richest man sitting here, or I'm as rich as a lot of you. Put that way. <laughs> I was just thinking, I, I, would, I would love to have $50 a week. Uh, I'm married to a wife here, uh -huh. and I talk to her and see if she won't give me a raise in my allowance. <laughs> Listen, we just got five minutes. Okay. You want to talk about a yeah. miracle? And I'd you like want to, to share tell you uh, uh, two, two things in this. First of all, I did give myself to Christ on July 3rd, and at that moment, my life changed moment. He gave me guidance and everything because I had wasted a lot of my life and God is, is now spending time waking me up and to use me to, you, to get to other people. I would like to tell you, the people that called in a few minutes ago that lost relatives and also Amy, in the writing that God gave me, the president came to my town today, there is a message where Billy Graham steps up to speak. And whenever he speaks, the words that I'm about to tell you are the words that God interpreted me through the words Billy Graham said. And they give us an answer as Christians of why this bombing happened in Oklahoma City. I don't have time to do the entire writing, but I'd like you to feel how special this writing is. And again, God gave me this message before I was a Christian, one month before. Get two minutes. It goes like this. It says, as the president said, still we needed an answer why. So Dr. Graham stood and said he was sent by God just to try. As he spoke, you could see he too was filled with sorrow and pain. His job was to comfort us and show God was truly not to blame. Why, he asked God, and the answer came like a flash of light. The Lord said, all things are meant to be. And for you, they gave up their lives. Feel no sorrow for the loved ones that for now are gone. For they are safe with me in heaven. They stand beside me and serve as my right arm. Yes, Trust in me and all that I say, and you will see them again in heaven on a glorious day. Hallelujah. Wow. And you see how powerful that message That's is? That's powerful. Yes. If we'll believe in the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and do God's will, we'll see these people again. If um, you're not a Christian, you need to get on your knees and become one. It's true. I praise God for what he's done in my life, and this is only the beginning. Hallelujah. The Oklahoma poet will be heard of, and I give God the glory and the praise, and my church, Living Waters, for giving me the guidance. Amen. Let me say again, the Oklahoma poet, the tape, uh, the Heart of America is available. Uh, we have an address. I don't know if it's going to be on the screen or not. Uh, I see. Yeah, there it is. The Oklahoma Poet, 1324 Northwest 12 Suite, 215 Moore, Oklahoma, 73170. Uh, you can call, write. You can call us here at 848-1400. We'd be more than happy to put you in touch with Spud Beckett because uh, God is using this ministry. And, you know, we've learned, by the way, Spud, over the years to understand and know and accept Romans 8 and 28. All things do indeed work together for good to them that love God. And I said when Amy was on, for those that have died, who died in Jesus, we shouldn't weep for them. We weep for the survivors. We, we hurt with the... And, you know, the moment that, that sons and daughters died there, the, the heart of God was broken. He knew more than anyone else what it felt like to lose a son. And he gave him up willingly. I say oftentimes about our Lord Jesus, he's the only person who ever died willingly, gave his life willingly. I've heard people say, oh, no, no, people have stood up and died. for No, they just chose to die earlier. But Jesus chose to die when he didn't have to. So it's in that faith and confidence that we trust today. I thank God, as much as your poetry, I, I mean, that's beautiful. I thank God more for the poet. I thank God more for the inspiration than just for the words that come out. Because, you see, there are hundreds of people who don't write but know God. There are many hundreds of people who do write and don't know God. But God's put the best of both combinations together in that he's changed your life and given you a totally. word. Do you have a closing word? We have 30 seconds that you'd like to say to our precious family on this day of commemoration. Okay. I would like to say the gift, first gift I gave God professionally. When man stops to think, we realize we could have all the money and own all the possessions we think we could ever need. But without the love of Jesus, we have nothing. And with his love in us, we could own nothing but have everything. Uh, Amen. Praise God. It's been a special day. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. Thank all of you who calls. Dozens have called. Maybe a hundred calls here. Thank you for just being here with us today. 
Thank you for allowing us to just share with you in this day of commemoration. April 19th, 1995 will live on in our hearts forever. We'll thank God throughout eternity that His grace is sufficient. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Oh, We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 24215, APO, Richmond, British Columbia, B7B1Y2. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now, until next time, remember to praise the Lord.